Hello, everybody. This is Mike and Matt from the Center for Life Support with our review on the Zoll R Series. How are you guys doing today? So we're going to talk about the old Zoll R Series. We're going to go from the outside working our way in. So the first thing I want you guys to look at is this little window at the top. It has a green check mark in it. So that green check mark means the defibrillator did its self-checks overnight. If there's a red X in there, it did not do its self-checks, so either you have to do that or you got to get yourself a different defibrillator. On the back, on the one corner, you have your three leads. We're going to talk about them in a little bit and why they're important. On the other side, you have your end title. So if your patient's intubated and on end title, you're going to connect this, and that's over there for you guys to use as well. On this side, you have your therapy cable. So this is home spot is going to be on the side here. So you would take this out, and this is what you connect to your pads. Otherwise, it's going to live right here in this little spot there. Looking at the front of the defibrillator. So you have some soft keys here on the bottom, which are going to come into play a little bit later. We're going to talk about them. You have your pacing knobs. You have your main power knob to turn it from off, monitor, defib, or pacer. You have some soft keys here, recorder, alarms, size, leads, and then your energy select, charge, analyze, and shock. So if we're going to use our defibrillator, first thing you're going to do is you're going to connect your pads. All right, to connect your pads, First, you're gonna pull the therapy cable out from the spot where it should always live. Grab your pads. You're gonna connect the pads till this clips in. If you needed to take the pads apart, you're gonna pull on the rigid edges of the clip and the other rigid edges on the therapy cable and pull your arms apart. All right, so now we have our pads connected. We're gonna come over and we're gonna turn it on. So there's two ways you can do this. You can either turn it to monitor mode or defib. So right now, we're gonna turn it to monitor mode And while you're in monitor mode, you basically can do all of your monitoring functions. You can't do any therapy or treatment at this point. So looking over here on the top left, you have your end title. The middle section is gonna be your CPR feedback. On the right hand side, it's gonna tell you your heart rate. Your rhythm is gonna be below in green. You have some CPR feedback here in the purple section below. And also below that, if your patient's intubated on, and on end title, you're going to see the end title plot down there. Underneath that, you have your options, parameters, code markers, report data, alarms. This one's open for a minute. We're going to see where, what's going to happen there in a second. So first thing I want to talk about is that CPR feedback. So Mike, can you do some compressions? So while Mike's doing chest compressions, you're going to notice that that idle timer is going to go away. Now what you're going to see is your depth compressions in centimeters. You're going to see your rate. That pillar is your release, so making sure that Mike's coming off the chest completely. And then you have a perfusion diamond. When he's on good compressions, it's going to completely fill up so you have good perfusion. When he stops, after 10 seconds, all that perfusion that you build up is going to completely disappear. So that's why you want to minimize the interruptions in less than 10 seconds. Now we're back to building up perfusion. All right, thank you, Mike. So we're going to go over some steps for cardioversion and defibrillating with this defibrillator next. So we're going to have another rhythm pop up on our screen. So looking at this rhythm, we're going to call this SVT. I know it's not SVT, but for this purposes, we're going to call it SVT. So for SVT, you have a patient, they're unstable. Your thought process, you're going to synchronize cardiovert. So since we're going to do therapy, what we're going to do is we're going to turn it over into defib. You're going to look at the bottom. Now you have a sync button. So if you hit that sync button, what's going to happen? It's going to tell you you're in sync button on the bottom and your energy selection. So synchronized cardioversion for an adult in SVT, your first dose is going to be 50. So we're going to select our energy. We're going to push it down. Now we're at 50, we're in sync mode. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna hit charge. And then after that, we're gonna put our finger on that shock button. We're gonna look around, make sure our field's clear. I'm clear, you're clear, oxygen clear. And then you're gonna hold that button in. Call your version complete. We're now gonna reassess our patient. So after we reassess our patient, we're gonna look, we're gonna see that they're still in SVT. They're still unstable. So we're gonna synchronize cardiovert for a second time. If you notice, every time you synchronize cardiovert, it kicks you back into defibrillation mode. So you have to hit that sync button again. So we're in sync mode again. The first one is at 50. The second one, we're going to move up to 100. We're going to charge a second time. Put our finger in that orange button. I'm clear, you're clear, oxygen clear, shock, your cardioversion. So we cardiovert, and then we're going to reassess. So we reassess our patient, and we now see this rhythm on the monitor. So this rhythm on the monitor is now VTAC. If you see VTAC on the monitor, the first question you want to ask yourself, does my patient have a pulse? Your patient can be VTAC with a pulse or VTAC without a pulse. So in this situation, we're gonna say your patient is in VTAC with a pulse. They are unstable. 
So unstable patients are getting electrical therapy. So again, first thing you're gonna do for synchronized cardio version is you're gonna hit that sync button. This is tell you're in sync mode. You'll be able to see the little white dots with all your QS complexes. And for VTAC, we're gonna start off at 100. So we have our energy selected at 100 right now. We're gonna hit charge. And again, on clear, you're clear, oxygen clear. Press and hold that button. So that's how we synchronize cardiovert for SCT and how we synchronize cardiovert for VTAC. That's patients in VTAC with a pulse. If patients are in VTAC without a pulse or receive this rhythm on our monitor, the fib, first thing we're going to do is we're going to start CPR. So now we have CPR in progress. So while CPR is in progress, you're going to see the metal time is going to disappear. You have your depth, you have your rate, you have your release, and you have your perfusion diamond. Since we already have our pads on our patient, we're going to go ahead and we're going to get ready to defibrillate right away. So your range for defibrillation is 120 to 200. So we're going to select our energy. We're going to go to 120. We're going to charge. Once all charged up. All right, on clear, mic clear, oxygen clear, shocking in three, two, one. Shock delivered, and then Mike's going to resume CPR. So this process is going to continue. Every two minutes, we're going to stop. We're going to do a pulse check. We're going to do a rhythm check, and we're going to shock again if they're still in VFib. Next rhythm we have coming up on our screen is going to be bradycardia. So for unstable bradycardia, we're going to think about pacing. So the way you pace with this defibrillator is you have your pads on. Our pads can't read the rhythm and pace at the same time. So what you need to do is you need to take your three leads out of the back and we're going to connect those to the patient. So while that's happening, I'm going to take our knob here at the middle, I'm going to turn it from defib down to pacing. So what you're going to notice, those downward deflections are your pacer spikes, the upward deflections are your QRS complexes. If we look down here in the middle, it's going to tell you you're in pacer mode, it's going to tell you your heart rate is set at 82 and your milliamps are at zero. On the bottom right, you have two knobs. The one on the right says rate, the one on the left says output. Output is the amount of electricity that you're delivering to the patient, to the heart, to make it start beating better. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna increase that output. I usually tell everybody about five or 10 at a time. And as you're increasing this, what you're looking for is those pacer spikes and those QRS complexes to come closer and closer together. You want them to get closer and closer together until there's a pacer spike in front of every QRS complex. And it's gonna look something like this. So now we have capture on the monitor. If we see this on the monitor, you're gonna go back and you're gonna reassess your patient, make sure their pulse correlates with what's on the monitor. So now we have our patient, they're being paced. The physician comes over and says, hey, I wanna see what the underlying rhythm is. To show that physician the underlying rhythm, we're not gonna turn it off. What we're gonna do is we're gonna hit this four to one button right here. So hit and hold that four to one button in. It's gonna take away three out of your four pacer spikes. It's gonna show you the underlying heart rate and the underlying rhythm. And then the second I let them go, we're back to being paced normally. So your patient, patient's still being paced, they're just being paced less frequently, and it's gonna show you the underlying rhythm. So those are the basic functions of the Zola R series defibrillator. One other thing I wanna show you is this analyze button. So you have a patient or somebody that goes down and you don't have a frontline provider there. You guys can use this AED, or this, I'm sorry, this defibrillator is an AED. What you're gonna do is you're gonna come over, you're gonna kick it all the way over to defib bed, and then you're gonna hit that analyze button. When you hit that analyze button, stand clear. It's gonna analyze the rhythm. If it's a shock rhythm, it's gonna charge up, and then you have to hit that shock Press button. Shock. So same thing, I'm clear, you're clear, oxygen clear, and then we're gonna shock the patient. That's gonna tell you the next steps. Thank you guys for watching this video with us. Have a good day.